transforming your life is a very powerful and exciting thing to undertake. Think about this word transform. Break it down into two words, if you will. The second word is form. It means the physical world that you live in and all the boundaries that we experience in our life. That's our form. It's our body. And then trans, which is a prefix that is put in front of our form. And the prefix trans means to go beyond, to soar above, to go past. So transforming really means going beyond your form. That is, going beyond the limits of your body, if you will. In this tape, I am presenting 101 specific ideas that you can use each and every day to transform or go beyond your form, your life. And transforming your life is not something that uh, is a very involved and uh, difficult process. It can be done in any given moment in your life. And as you listen to this tape, there are many ways that you can use it. You might want to just listen to one thought each day and let it sink in and meditate on it over and over again in the morning. Or you might want to listen to ten of them and let them just sort of roll around inside of your head and then go back and replay them and replay them. This is a tape that you just won't want to use once. You'll use it over and over and over again in your life. It is really designed to help you to understand how powerful your thoughts are. You can change your life in a matter of moments by doing one simple thing. Change the thoughts you think and the words you speak. Your internal dialogue has an enormous effect on every aspect of your life, and you can alter it in a positive way, beginning right now with this tape. I call this tape 101 Ways to Transform Your Life. Transform, going beyond your form. Listen to each thought, let it sink in, and begin putting it into practice, beginning now. Number one. Know in your heart that there is an invisible intelligence in everything. And you have the power to make contact with this divine intelligence and create a life of bliss. There is something divine that rolls through all things. You can't get a hold of it. A little seedling has treeness in it when it is put into the ground. You can't see treeness, you can't see the tree, yet you know it is in there. And same with you. You have greatness, you have an energy that is so powerful and it flows through you and in everything that you come into contact with. Know it, begin to trust it, and you'll find yourself experiencing transformation in your life. Number two, this is your sacred quest. The doorway to higher levels of awareness in your life opens inward. And most of us spend our lives facing the wrong way, looking outside of ourselves for the solutions to our problems. Where inward, in that silent, quiet, empty space within, is where the universal intelligence lies. It is where your essence as a human being is. Begin to look inward rather than outward each day. Number three. Become aware that there are no accidents in our intelligent universe. Realize that everything that shows up in your life has something to teach you. Appreciate everyone and everything in your life. You need to begin looking inward at who you are and why you are here instead of outward at the physical world or anything in it. Make this a day of appreciation, a day of being in awe and bewilderment of everything that you come into contact with. Appreciate your liver, appreciate your eyes, appreciate your legs, appreciate your mind, and everything that you come into contact with. Instead of judging it, just appreciate it. Number four. Draw your inner energy from the beauty that surrounds you. When you do so, this energy reception will become a source of strength and sustenance in your life. As you begin practicing beauty appreciation and seeing it in all things that you encounter, including all people, as you begin to see the fullness of God in everyone rather than something to judge, you'll find a new kind of bliss in your everyday life. 
Number five, be peaceful, experience silence, meditate, and really listen to God. The result will be that you will find the solution to each and every one of your problems, whether it be related to relationships or finances, health or self-image, all within yourself. The peace and the quiet and the solitude all come from an understanding that God's one and only voice is silence, as Herman Melville reminded us. And if you can just be, even for one moment today, just peaceful and just go within, you're going to find a bliss that you perhaps didn't ever know before. Number six, forgive yourself for your transgressions. See that mistakes are lessons for you to transcend. Release yourself from the tyranny of self-recrimination. Make the decision to be free. Everything that's ever happened to you in your life has happened for a reason. And when you are filled with an absence of self-forgiveness and you're full of recriminations about what you did or shouldn't have done or what you should have done, all of these kinds of things are really a message that you're sending to the universe saying, God's plan doesn't work and mine does. That's really an insidious thing to say. Everything that you've done or experienced is over, and you had something to learn from it. So forgive yourself and move on with your life. Number seven. Write down this ancient truth and reread it on a daily basis. When you seek happiness for yourself, it will always elude you. When you seek happiness for others, you will find it yourself. Number eight, attempt to remove all enemies from your thoughts. The same intelligence that flows through you flows through all human beings. When you know that you are connected to all, you cannot fathom striking out at others, let alone feeling hatred for them. Or another way of saying this is, on a round planet, there's no choosing up sides. We are all are here for a reason. We all have the same divine energy flowing through us. And when we stop thinking of ourselves as separate from everyone else, we begin to see and experience the love that we are here for in the first place. In my opinion, God doesn't want us to love God. God wants us to learn to love each other. That's what it means to be a holy being, to not have enemies and to love each other. That's truly what loving God is about. Number nine. Release everything that you have been told is impossible or unrealistic and allow yourself the freedom to make your own contract with God about what is possible for you. Examine all of the doubts that you have about miracles and miracle workers and replace the doubt with openness. Be open and release everything that you hate. Number 10. Keep in mind that grievances bring turmoil, while communication brings peace. If you are angry at someone in your life, work at communicating with that person about your aggrieved feelings, no matter how difficult it may be. One of the things that really destroys relationships is the unwillingness to talk or be open about the things that are difficult for us to talk about. So even if it's something that you feel inside you can't do, just push aside that impossibility and say to yourself, I'm going to talk to my spouse or my lover or my daughter or my mother about these things. And the talking is a way of releasing the energy that is built up that creates all of the turmoil that we live with that destroys relationships. Number 11. Lighten your material load starting today. As you do so, less energy is spent hoarding and insuring and moving and polishing and so on. The less attracted you are to your possessions and the more you are able to share them with others unconditionally, the more peaceful your life will be. See how many things you can give away that you no longer use and don't ask anything for it in return. And don't tell anybody else that you did it. Just give not to get, but just for the beautiful soulful notion of unburdening your soul with all of that material stuff that you no longer need. Number 12. Work at being content with who you are rather than pleasing others by being unauthentic. Say to yourself, I am what I am and it is okay 
as long as I am not hurting anyone else in the process, you have a right to be who you are. And the only morality that you have to be concerned with is whether somebody else is being hurt with you being who you are. You don't have to apologize for anything or anyone. You don't have to apologize to anyone for anything that you are. It's a wonderful affirmation. I am what I am. From La Caja Fall. I am what I am. Say it over and over again today. Number 13. Remember that what you think about expands. Since you have the power to make your inner world work for you or against you, use it to create the images of bliss that you want to occur in your material world. Eventually, that inner bliss will be the blueprint that you consult as the architect of your everyday life. Your thoughts create your reality. Once you know this, you'll start being very careful about what you think about. Number 14. Let go of the concept that more is better. This idea keeps us exclusively in the physical domain. You can replace the more is better belief with an inner serenity that does not need more to be acceptable. Let me ask you this rhetorical question as you consider this transforming thought. Where is the peace in more is better? And of course you know the answer. There is no peace in more is better. And if it doesn't bring peace to your life, then it's something that you want to discard. Number 15. Try to get back to nature today in some way. Give yourself time in the woods, trekking in the mountains, walking in open meadows, or walking barefoot on the beach. When you take the time to drink in the beauty of the natural world, you will release your belief that things and accumulations are needed for you to feel complete. There's a wonderful saying I used to tell all of my clients. The wilderness is therapy. Even if you live in a city, if you can just walk barefoot along the grass in a park someplace, you'll find yourself feeling more blissful. Number 16. Today, shed your fault-finding tendencies. Know that you are the creator of your life and that a loving presence is always with you. Your ability to be self-reliant will overtake your habit of assigning blame. Another way of saying this is that your life is the product of all of the choices that you have made up until now. And no one else is to blame for anything that is going on in your life. Circumstances don't make a man. They reveal him, as James Allen said. Number 17. Adhere to the most important guideline ever passed on to us from the spiritual world. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Make this a daily affirmation in your life, beginning today. I will love my neighbor as I love myself. Number 18. Make an attempt to think globally rather than locally. People who look different, who speak a different language, who have different beliefs, are all a part of us. We are all now here together. In the eyes of the loving presence, there are no favorites. Number 19. Relax about the future and let it go. Instead, make an active commitment to enjoy this day a little bit more. It is very difficult to accomplish anything when you're stressed out over the outcome. When you relax and get peaceful, you become inspired and efficient. And inspire comes from in spirit. When you are in spirit, you are inspired. And the future isn't something you need to be worried about. You are totally consumed with now, which is all there is, all there ever has been, and all there ever will be now. Number 20. Learn to allow others to work out their difficulties without feeling that you are the only one who can fix things. Your ego is pushing you to intervene while your higher self wants you to experience peace and harmony. Choose the latter. Allow your higher self to rule. Let other people work out some of the things and don't have to be right all the time. Number 21. Put this affirmation in as many places as possible. Write it down. In my world, nothing ever goes wrong. 
Look at it each day and let it remind you that everything that is happening to you is in divine order and comes with a lesson. If you can live your life in the spiritual world as a spiritual being, having a human experience, you become the witness to your life. And as you witness it, you say, nothing is going wrong. These aren't problems that I have to be absorbed with. These aren't things that I have to be neurotic over. I am the witness. I am going to watch them. I'm going to learn from them and understand that they're all in order, even the ones that I don't understand and the ones that I don't like. In my world, as Nisargadatta Maharaj said, and I am that, nothing ever goes wrong. Meaning, when you live in the spiritual world, you are the observer, and you are not all of the boundaries and all of the forms and all of the things that we call problems. Number 22. Be conscious of your thoughts, of the makeup of your internal dialogue. Know that any thoughts you repeat that are contrary to your divine eternal essence are keeping you from experiencing the joyous and complete life you deserve. Number 23. Make an attempt to tame your ego by catching yourself when you persistently use the pronoun I. You can make the decision to take the focus off of yourself. The more you cut back on I, the more personal freedom you will experience. See how many times today you can start your sentences with you rather than I. Instead of making self-references, just inquire about the other person. Number 24. Remember that you are not your country, you are not your race, you are not your religion. You are an eternal spirit. Seeing yourself as a spiritual being without labels is a way to transform the world and reach a sacred place for all of humanity. Another way of saying that is that you are not what you notice, but you are the noticer of what you notice. Number 25. If you are engaging in addictive behavior of any kind, the most effective way to rid yourself of the addiction is to go directly to your higher self and turn this problem over to God. That's right, just turn it over, surrender, knowing that the highest force in the universe is within you. Simply say, God, I am turning this addiction over to you. I've tried everything else, now I'm trying you. And allow the higher part of yourself and allow God in to help remove those temptations of the senses that you think you can't live without. Number 26. Practice releasing the emotions of fear and guilt and replace them with love, forgiveness, and kindness. If you're feeling guilty about your past conduct, remind yourself that you are inviting turmoil into your life. Release the guilt by forgiving yourself and vowing to avoid this kind of conduct in the future. Guilt is a waste of your mental energy. Everything that you've done is over. It all had a lesson for you. Using up your present moments, feeling bad about it, is only one more way to keep yourself from being fully and spiritually alive in the present. Send guilt out of your life, beginning now. It's just a thought away. Number 27. Accept this seeming contradiction the fact that your body will die and that you are also eternal. Surrender to this fact when someone dies and stop telling yourself that his or her death shouldn't have happened the way that it did. You can surrender and you can grieve. You do not die. That which was never born never dies. You are an eternal spirit, formless. You are transforming your life with this tape. Going beyond form means that you the real you, the observer within, is ageless and timeless. But that which it is observing or noticing is bound by the need for things to begin and end. Number 28. Make a daily effort to look upon others without condemnation. Every judgment takes you away from your goal of peace. Keep in mind that you do not define anyone with your judgments, but only define yourself as someone who needs to judge. Or as it says in the New Testament, judge not, judge not, 
lest you too be judged. Number 29. Give yourself the gift of a silent retreat every day, even if it is just for a few moments. Go back to that key to higher awareness of shutting down that inner dialogue and know that this is your ticket to peace. You can just simply close your eyes in any given moment and retreat to that inner divine place that Robert Frost de described in his poetry. We all sit around in a ring and suppose, while the secret sits in the center and knows. There is a secret within you, and you can only access it through silence. Give yourself a moment of silence. It's the greatest tribute we can ever pay to anyone. A moment of silence. Give yourself the same opportunity of one moment of silence. Number 30. When you have the choice to be right or to be kind, always choose kind. Remember that you have that choice in all of your daily interactions. And this one key, this one key of being kind rather than right in any interaction that you have will do more for transforming your life than any course that you could ever take or any book that you could ever read or any tape that you could ever listen to. Be kind and give up your need to be right. Number 31. Avoid exaggerating or changing facts for the purpose of impressing others today. This quality may be cute in a child, but in an adult, it is a way of relying on the ego to keep illusions alive. Persisting in this practice will just keep you from knowing your higher self, which needs no exaggeration to feel important in the eyes of others. Number 32. Remember that your past must have taught you the wrong messages if these messages do not bring you peace and happiness today. Do not be afraid to let go of those beliefs if they do not promote a sense of peace for yourself. Being peaceful is what your higher self wants. It's what transforming your life is all about. And any thought or any belief that you have that keeps you from peace in your life is one you want to discard no matter how long you've had it or how much you've cherished it or what the tradition is in your family or in your country. If it doesn't bring you peace, then you don't need it. Number 33. Judge not. If you see someone who is very different from you in physical appearance or in age or in economic status, use your mind to send them love rather than a judgmental thought. We have so many of those judgmental thoughts when we see someone who is older, when we see someone who is younger, when we see someone who has a different custom than we have, when we see someone who wears different jewelry or has body decorations or something that we don't go along with. When you see someone like that today, whoever they may be, whether it's someone who is begging on the street or whether it's someone who is uh, wearing a certain kind of clothes or acting in a certain way as you're driving, try not judging them and just seeing the unfolding of God in them. Try sending them love rather than judgment. Number 34. Begin to change the vocabulary you use to describe yourself and your expectations. Instead of saying, maybe, if I'm lucky, or perhaps, and one never knows, use words and phrases such as, absolutely, certainly, and I know I can. When you use these kinds of words that reflect an absence of doubt, you're going to begin to conduct your life in the very same way. Watch out for those things that sort of communicate to others and to yourself that you don't really have within you the capacity to manifest what you want for yourself in your life. Number 35. If there is someone in your life whom you love, tell him or tell her how you feel, even if you're afraid to do so. By taking action against your fear of intimacy, you invite your higher self, that is your loving presence, to replace your ego's non-loving fear tactics. Just tell them, I love you. And if you feel the fear, then do it anyway. Number 36. You cannot have a better past, so abandon that idea right now. You did what you knew how to do, given the circumstances of your life. Instead of indulging in regrets, let your thoughts remain on love and let your actions stem from that love. The past is over and you did what you knew how to do, and you no longer are that person. So don't fill yourself with blame and angst 
about what you might have done in the past. Learn from it and know that you are a new soul today. Learn from it and know that you are a new human being today. Number 37. Let go of all the beliefs that convince you of your inadequacies and shortcomings. Clean out that closet of worn out loyalties to what you can and cannot do. Just open yourself up right now in this moment. Just be. Number 38. Spend a day silently reciting the word love whenever you encounter another human being. This practice has such a positive effect that you may choose to use it as a silent background mantra throughout your day. Just repeat over and over inwardly, love, 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 and just say it. If you say it a hundred times, you're going to begin to feel the expression emanating and radiating outward from yourself. Number 39. Make an attempt to shift your career objectives from self-absorption to a calling. Use your talents and your special interests to fulfill your service with your calling. Your life work will take on a dramatic shift toward abundance, and you're going to begin to feel that you are on purpose. You have a calling. You are here for a heroic mission. Think of everything that you do in this day as a part of that calling, and you'll begin to rid yourself of some of the extraneous kinds of things and judgments that you have about your life. Number 40. Practice giving without receiving. Send anonymous contributions or gifts. Pay the toll of the car behind you. Put money into someone's parking meter. A feeling of peace and contentment will be your reward. Number 41. Be still and know. These four words will help you get past striving and help you get to know the bliss of being here now. When you allow yourself to be still, you will understand the futility of constant striving or chasing after more. Keep those four words in mind today. Be still and know. Number 42. In the midst of a tumultuous meeting or a frantic encounter with your children, get up and excuse yourself just for a moment. Give yourself five minutes to get centered and then ask God this question. What is my purpose here? And how may I serve you in the midst of all of this confusion? A simple removing of yourself from the turmoil and talking with God just for a moment will give you an inspiration to get past all of the turmoil and tumultuousness. Number 43. Spend special moments in awe of the miracle that life truly is. Awe is the loving appreciation for God's work in the presence of the divine intelligence. Be in awe. Number 44. Curb your need to be right. If you truly want to work on this area of restraining your ego, then simply respond to what someone has just said without offering an argument or even a piece of advice. As you practice this technique, your ego will fade and your relationships will improve. Number 45. Notice the acts of kindness that other people do rather than their wrongdoing. We are all good and decent and loving souls, but we occasionally get lost. When you can focus on the good in another and hold that in your mind, you're acting from your higher self. And this is called transforming your life. Number 46. Keep a journal. In it, describe what offends you about other people. If you can be objective, you will find that what offends you is really a judgment about how others ought to be behaving. These judgments are that false idea of yourself that is convincing you that the world ought to be as you are rather than as it really is. 